The ministry of Wickham Youth for Christ may have started in 1985, but we have a centuries old legacy. A legacy of faithful people who heard the call of God and stepped out in faith to follow him, who ministered in and through the building we inhabit, now known as Kingfisher House. A legacy that echoes through time. Though the seasons may have changed, the mission remains the same. God's mission to children and young people started on West Wickham Road back in the early 1850s, when it was a small hamlet called the Bird in Hand. In these cottages, a young man, Henry Keane, was desperately concerned about young people, especially their physical and spiritual well-being. So he invited them to his cottage to teach them to read and share with them about Jesus. Within a few years, the land where Kingfisher House now stands was given by Sir Dashwood to meet the need that Henry Keane saw. The community raised the funds to build this Sunday school room and it was opened on the 6th of September, 1859. At its opening ceremony, Malachi chapter three, verse 16 was read, which says, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened and heard. The building was dedicated to the service of God and prayer said, asking for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. The speaker at the opening said that if Mr. Spurgeon himself had asked to preach in it, the trustees would willingly grant it to him. And this was extended to any who would preach the truths of the Bible. Henry Keane is buried here on the edge of St. Lawrence's churchyard, where his resting place looks straight down upon West Wickham Road and the Bird in Hand Hamlet, where he lived and served all his life. His tombstone bears the tribute that he wanted, founder of the Bird in Hand Sunday School, which since 1859 has exerted a good influence among the young of the neighbourhood. Thomas Lucas was one of the early leaders of the school and the South Buck Standard said this. He took a very deep interest in the little Sunday school at the Bird in Hand, which was originally founded for poor children and is still alluded to as the ragged school. He was superintendent of this school for very many years and many will still recall the quaint spectacle he presented every Sunday, walking from the school, surrounded by seven or eight of his scholars, to whom he was a veritable Santa Claus, while they, to him, were an object of the utmost affection and regard. He not infrequently took a poorly clad child to the nearest tailor. Henry Wheeler commenced teaching at the Sunday school when he was just 22 years old and was a teacher for 56 years. He was described as wearing his frock coat and high silk hat with a dignified yet humble bearing. His diary showed that twice each Sunday he walked from home to the school and back. So in the lifetime of teaching of the school, he walked 12,000 miles for the purpose of teaching children about Jesus. Upon his death, the local paper wrote that there are many in High Wycombe today who can testify to the value of Mr Wheeler's work at the Bird in Hand School. Most of the scholars came from poor homes and often Mr Wheeler manifested the Christian spirit in a practical way on their behalf. When the Sunday school closed in 1922, the building was rented out and used by a variety of groups and church congregations. However, in 1928, it was discussed as to whether the building still had purpose. This wasn't to be the first nor the last time this would be discussed throughout its history. But God clearly had a plan and the prayers of those faithful people at the building's opening and over the course of the years did not go unheard or unanswered. And as a result, 
the building and its ministry has continued over the centuries to be dedicated to the service of God and his blessing has certainly been seen and experienced by many. Wickham Youth for Christ became the latest occupier of the building in 1991 and has now been in residence for 30 years. But you may be wondering why in all of this is it significant for Wickham Youth for Christ today? Well, this year we were gifted the building by its trustees to carry on its legacy of mission to children and young people in this area that has been in effect since the 1850s. Our heart is to see God continue to be at work, to be dedicated to him and to see his blessing being seen and experienced by those that we serve. We have some big shoes to fill. Walking 12,000 miles seems a long way to walk, but we know that it is worth doing for the sake of the gospel. Many of us today and those who will join us over the months and years ahead will continue to dedicate ourselves to God and we pray we will have the passion and the faith of those that God have gone before. May God pour out his Holy Spirit upon this town.